on the behalf of PIED and RASTA, I welcome you all to the PIED RASTA webinar series. We have organized seven webinars in this series on 18 topics. And 18 means we, we will have presentations from the awardees of RASTA competitive grant program. And in these webinars, we will talk about interesting public policy issues in Pakistan. Uh, so this today's topic is on energy crisis in Pakistan, how to manage it, very important topic. And this is the first webinar of this series. And this is uh, uh, part of our Rasta dissemination strategy. We don't just want to complete research and uh, put those uh, nice books in our shelves, but we want to disseminate the message uh, to the relevant authorities and people. And that's why we are organizing these webinars. So you will have these webinars every Thursday uh, at 6 p.m. Uh, every week. For today's uh, webinar, we will have uh, three quick presentations. Uh, presentations mean these will not be very formal kind of presentations, but uh, rather our presenters will only talk about the purpose of their research they will talk about the key takeaways from their research and uh, if they have some uh, really good actionable policy recommendations for the government and other stakeholders, so they will discuss that. So today we will have three presenters. First is Dr. Naveed Arshad from LAMS. Uh, Dr. Naveed is in Skardur these days, so he has sent us his recording. Uh, so we will run that recording first and then uh, we will we can we can have question answer uh, because his co uh, pi will be here second presentation uh, will be uh, by daniel selim uh, daniel is uh, uh, from ntdc lahore and finally we will have a quick presentation from fozia sohail uh, she is from aerc university of karachi uh, so these all three are our uh, awardees of Rasta Competitive uh, Grant Program. Uh, so let's start with the first one, which is the recording of uh, uh, Naveed Darshad Saab. Uh, Nazim, please recording run karte quickly. My name is Naveed Darshad and uh, I'm going to be presenting a solution that can help us uh, in uh, reducing the energy crisis of Pakistan. First of all, I apologize that <clears throat> I'm not available uh, for a live presentation as I am teaching an experiential learning course in Skardu these days, the internet is not at all reliable. So I thought that's better to have a live presentation followed by the QA uh, from my group. So uh, this project we carried out uh, with the funding from PAID uh, through the Rasta program. And uh, we had some very interesting observations that we uh, had. And uh, today I'm going to present some of those observations, some of those solutions to the energy crisis in Pakistan. So uh, let's start with uh, some basic intro that Pakistan has after the power crisis in 2010, around in 2016, we had uh, too much electricity. And uh, now we have so much electricity more that by 2023, we'll have about 50% more electricity. On top of that, most of the new plants up till now are on fossil fuels or on RLG or coal. And we are uh, very much dependent on international commodity prices. If the commodity prices goes up, uh, we will have a uh, severe problem in our electricity distribution system. And that really cripples uh, the whole power sector and also the economy. Now, <clears throat> currently, Pakistan's uh, circular debt, which is the amount of money we owe to uh, the power plants, is around 2.4 trillion rupees. Uh, this is increasing every day uh, by 2025. Uh, if we go um, without uh, any intervention with business as usual, this will go up to four plus trillion rupees. There are many causes of circular debt. Ron planning is one. High tariffs are uh, another in terms of generation. Uh, theft, non-payment, delayed payment, subsidies, technical losses. And uh, these days, the two things that are hurting us the most are the last two ones, which is the imported fuel-based plants and the excess generation capacity for which we have to pay the capacity payment, whether we use them or not. 
so there are many interventions that one can do uh, what we thought that uh, we'll look at interventions that are no cost or low cost kind of intervention and see that how much can this save us and help us uh, uh, our way out from the energy crisis uh, in the previous government uh, in the winter of uh, 2021 the government announced uh, a tariff package for energy uh, users that if you use uh, more energy in the off peak months uh, you will have to pay less uh, we argue that this uh, strategy although looks good from one side uh, may be uh, detrimental to the power sector on the other side and and, and, a, and a new strategy uh, a modified strategy is maybe more helpful to uh, explain that first let's uh, uh, demystify one kilowatt of energy in Pakistan, depending on what its price is. So uh, the current bill that we get, uh, I mean, this I'm talking about a few months ago, uh, was around 27 rupees. Out of that, about 13 rupees was generation, 2.5 rupees in transmission and distribution charges, 5.3 rupees across subsidy, and then there are taxes. Now, uh, some of these things are fixed, so we cannot do much about it. Uh, in the generation side, we have two charges. One is energy cost which is the fuel cost, uh, and the second is the capacity charge, which include all O&M and, M and uh, capacity payments that we do. Um, the capacity cost, uh, unless we renegotiate the uh, agreements, which the government did, uh, is a standard cost. Our goal is that how can we decrease the energy cost, which is uh, about, I would say about 20% uh, of the whole one kilowatt hour price. And there are ways in which we can reduce the energy cost by just uh, using some and data analytics and doing some interesting analysis uh, of usage. Now, <clears throat> the, typically the electricity load uh, varies between day and night. Uh, there is a low uh, peak and then the high peak and then the base load. And uh, the capacity and uh, master energy, all of them are uh, has to run all the time. But then we add new fossil fuel based plants depending on how much the load goes up. Now. If we look at uh, the the charges that uh, a plant takes, uh, our numbers vary between two rupees to about 48, 49 rupees. Again, I'm talking about this about the few months old rates. These rates are uh, increased because of uh, dollar fluctuations and also the uh, international commodity prices. Now, this is a very big band of between two rupees and 48 rupees. And what we can do uh, is somehow to optimize them and manage them properly. Now, um, in case of uh, the uh, the pricing of energy, the energy price is typically calculated using a weighted average cost of generation. And this is the average of all the plants that run. And that's the average price that we really charge to the customer. Now, if somehow we can have uh, there is a low uh, demand period and high, high demand period. So anything, if we add a new load or shift a load from the peak time to the off peak time, that actually helps us reduce weighted average cost of generation. So anything that we add or move to the lower than the blue line in the gray area actually helps us in reducing the energy cost. Now, our goal is to somehow use a phenomena that's called demand side management and uh, peak reduction to shift the load from the peak side to the off peak side. And this is what we did in the past few years, in the past uh, year and a half. Uh, now, um, this is the whole electricity profile of Pakistan. And you see the, uh, the pink color are the, all the fossil fuel parts. And that's the opportunity that we have in order to reduce the cost of generation or weighted average cost of generation. What we did was that we did a analysis of what is the weighted average cost of generation throughout the year. And it's surprising that uh, the weighted average cost of generation is highest during winters where the government was announcing a, a power policy where they are saying in 70 months in the use, which means that the more we use, the more we lose because of the high cost of fuel high cost of imported fuel. Although the demand is less, but the fuel price is high. So what we did was we developed a dashboard and we developed a whole, uh, you can say pricing of all the plants and hourly load 
to see that if we shift the load from the peak hour to the off-peak hour, what's going to be the change in the weighted average cost of generation? Um, we made a uh, dashboard. If you're interested, there's a link down there, uh, which will take you to that dashboard. And we have uh, pro uh, provided a demonstration version uh, where you can see that how this, uh, uh, this, this whole works. So, so here on this slide, what we did was that we reduced 5% of the load uh, by shifting it from the peak hours to the off peak hours. And uh, this is the result that we got that from uh, by shifting the 5% load, we are saving uh, the, the cost is going down by one rupee of the weighted average cost of generation. And the monthly saving for this is about 66.91 million, which looks like a drop in the whole circular debt. But the thing is that this is something that we can do without doing any investment by just incentivizing the consumers to shift their load and, and there are ways of doing it. Also, since we are using more efficient plants uh, in the uh, off-peak hours, we will have less emissions. In this particular case, we are reducing emissions by a significant margin. Now, looking at the Pakistan's load profiles, in almost in every season, we have a huge difference between the peak load and the base load. Uh, in summers, we have a difference about 3,000 megawatt. Winters, we have 4,500 megawatt. And similarly, in other seasons. So if we can shift the load from the peak to the off-peak time, then we can have a situation where the total cost, which is a weighted average cost of generation, can be reduced. Uh, and uh, this is a win-win situation for both the consumers as well as the government. Now, the question is which loads to fix. Of course, I do not want to shift my air conditioner load from midsummer afternoon uh, to, the, to, the, to the evening. Uh, but there are loads that we call flexible loads that can shift. And industrial uh, processes have a lot of these flexible loads. For example, uh, steel mills. Uh, steel mills average bill is about 500 million rupees with the prices of maybe January 2022. Now, with this low traffic, they can reduce their electricity expenses by 5 to 15 percent by just shifting their uh, some percentage of their load and give an opportunity for the government or the power sector to earn more money uh, by spending less on fuel. Textile sector is another one, water pumping, industrial demand response, and uh, new loads which are coming up also uh, are flexible loads. And then we should be actively on a hunt for flexible loads so that we can, we can use them and reduce our weighted average cost of generation. Finally, some policy recommendations. So based on the earlier slide of the energy minister, we think that uh, the seasonal prices is not good, but rather we should have hourly tariffs which are applicable to all seasons when we have excess generation. And we should be using those off-peak timings uh, for incentivizing uh, the usage. Uh, winter loads on imported fuel requires a careful tariff regime because at on the front of it, uh, on, on the face of it, it looks like that they are saving us money. But since the price of the fuel import bill is quite high, uh, we need to have, we need to look at it um, uh, carefully and see that if, if that's really useful and beneficial for us. Smart metering, of course, is required to provide any kind of uh, good, uh, you can say, uh, the services to the consumer to provide demand side management. And uh, large dams like Mangla Tarbela and the new dams that are coming up should uh, also help us in, uh, in, in, in having a better way to reduce cost of generation because they provide a water battery. <laughs> and uh, the first loads that should get the low off-peak rate because of the reduced WCG should be the large flexible loads like steel mills in the textile sector and others. And finally, I would like to thank PAID uh, and Rasta team for providing this uh, funding, for giving us an opportunity to work on this and also to present our work at this seminar. Uh, my colleagues will be available to answer uh, any question. G, excellent. Thank you so much. Uh... We will get the, we'll take the question and answers uh, at the end. So first, uh, let's go to uh, Daniel Salim sir from NTDC Lahore uh, for his presentation. Daniel, please over to you. Thank you. Fahim, Fahim I think quite frankly, mm -hmm. let's take questions 15 minutes after each presentation so that, you know, it's fresh in people's minds and they can listen. Okay. Okay. So, so yes, Daniel. So can you can you hold for like five minutes so so that we can take questions? Sure. Thank you. Uh, Hafiz sir from uh, uh, who is the co PI of uh, Naveed Arshad sir? Nazim, hand ke co PI yahan pe. Nazim. 
नाजिम यस सर मैं अवेलेबल यस सर आई एम अवेलेबल जी अवेस साहब यस हाफिज अवेस साहब जी थैंक यू सो मच अवेस साहब फॉर जॉइनिंग लेट्स टेक क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम द ऑडियंस इफ देयर आर एनी क्वेश्चंस अबाउट द फर्स्ट प्रेजेंटेशन बाय नवीद यस श्योर श्योर सर so please raise your hands unmute your mic and no questions very surprising if there is any question at the end of the presentation to सर आई राइट इट डाउन और उसके बाद मैं देता हूँ इस पूरे सेशन के बाद भी बेशक कर लूँ अगर अभी तक किसी को नहीं आ रहा कुछ क्वेश्चन मुझे एक बात आती है इम्प्लीकेशन दैट योर स्टडी हैज और करंट इकोनॉमिक पॉलिसी अगर हम एनर्जी पॉलिसी जो हमारी एनर्जी पॉलिसी मिसिंग फॉर द लास्ट सो मेनी इयर्स आई शुड से एनर्जी पॉलिसी आई शुड से एनर्जी मैनेजमेंट पॉलिसी स्पेशली सर्कुलर डेट and the fact that we got so many losses mounting up is ke bare mein does your study have any implications for that uh, sir implications in a sense matlab thoda sa agar aap isko further elaborate kar de supposing uh, the prime uh, minister in, in the sense supposing the prime minister called you today and said you okay you've done this study etc how can i use your results to shape I and mean, you obviously you can't shape the whole policy but what what your results have to say if we were going to make a policy to um, you know shape the energy sector of pakistan especially the circular debt especially the losses and all those things so think about it and just uh, you know try and see how your results will um, help us yes acha sir iska jo hai ek already jisna bhi presentation mein bhi sir ne bataya कि ऑलरेडी हमारे इसके लिए हमें स्मार्ट मीटर का इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर रिकॉर्ड होगा ना लेकिन उससे पहले सर ये कि कुछ हमारे पास यूएस एड की तरफ से हमारे पास जो है ना स्मार्ट मीटर्स का एक इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर अवेलेबल है तो एग्जिस्टिंग इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर को यूज करते हुए जस्ट लाइक एक पायलट प्रोजेक्ट जो है उसको शुरू किया जाए और जो कहाँ पे लगे हुए सर कुछ पेस्कोज में लगे हुए पेस्को एक अपना डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन कंपनी हम लोगों के पास पिशावर इलेक्ट्रिक सप्लाई और कुछ मेपको में लगे हुए मुल्तान इलेक्ट्रिक सप्लाई इन दोनों के इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर को यूज करते हुए हम लोग जो है अपना इसका एक जो है वो इनिशियली इसका एक पायलट प्रोजेक्ट शुरू कर लें और उसके बाद जो उसके रिजल्ट्स आते जाएंगे वो हो इन इतने ज्यादा फेवरेबल होंगे कि अपना वो विल प्रेफर कि हमारा जो फर्दर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर है वो भी हमारे पास अपना जो है वो स्मार्ट मीटर्स के ऊपर जो है वो कन्वर्ट हो जाए और उसके बाद फिर सर सेकंड टारगेटेड लोग वो होंगे जो कि हमारे पास बल्क पावर कंज्यूमर्स हैं इसमें मोस्टली बड़ी इंडस्ट्रीज आ जाती हैं हम लोगों के पास स्टील मिल्स हो गई और इस तरह की जो हाई कंजम्पन इंडस्ट्रीज हैं उसके बाद फिर ये जो है उनको दिया जाए और उसके बाद उसके बाद सर इनसे लेकर जो है ये वाला जो है वो उनके ऊपर इम्प्लीमेंट किया जाए और इससे भी जो हम लोगों के पास एक फेवरेबल रिजल्ट्स जो हैं वो निकल आएंगे और इसके बाद सर फिर थर्ड फेज के अंदर जो है वो फिर थोड़ी वाइडर कम्युनिटी को जो है वो हमें जो है इसको ऑफर कर देना चाहिए तो इस तरह जो है ना हमने इसके स्टेप्स बनाए हुए और अच्छा टेल मी व्हाट डू यू मीन बाय स्मार्ट मीटरिंग एंड हाउ कैन दे बी यूज्ड एंड व्हाई आर वी टेकिंग सच अ स्लो टाइम टू डू दैट आपने भी पढ़ा होगा आपने भी न्यूज देखी होंगी की एशियन डेवलपमेंट बैंक जो है वो आइसको लेस्को में लगाने के लिए सर दो बिलियन डॉलर लोन देने के लिए तैयार है तो इट कॉस्ट टू मच और उसके बाद इसका दो बिलियन डॉलर लगाने के बाद वो भी लोन के जो आई टी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर है वो डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन कंपनी को भी बनाना पड़ेगा और उसकी भी कॉस्ट होगी 
बट देखें एक चीज आई वेन आई वॉज इन द प्लानिंग कमीशन वी डिट अट वर्क ऑन दिस जो बैक एंड कॉस्ट है सॉफ्टवेयर वो तो इतनी बड़ी बात नहीं है सॉफ्टवेयर आई थिंक विल कॉस्ट यू नो मोर देन अ फ्यू मिलियन डॉलर नॉट अबाउट बट ऑल्सो फॉर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के लिए ना वो पूरे के पूरे डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन कंपनी को कवर करने के लिए है ठीक है और आप अपना जो है वो स्मार्ट मीटर ले सकते हैं सर हम लोग स्मार्ट मीटर की भी इंस्टॉलेशन करते हैं एंड इट विल कॉस्ट अराउंड अपना हम लोगों को एक स्मार्ट मीटर जो ई गेज का है वो हम लोगों को तकरीबन अराउंड ढाई लाख रुपए का पड़ता है दो ढाई लाख रुपए का पड़ता है खाली स्मार्ट मीटर से Okay, so we have we have couple of questions. Uh, Uzma, please you go ahead first. Ji, assalamu alaikum. Uh, my question is that uh, how uh, you can see that uh, it can be um, consumer friendly. बिकॉज कंज्यूमर तो ये नहीं चाहता कि उसको कोई बहुत ज्यादा कॉस्ट पड़े और इसमें कॉस्ट इन्वॉल्व है डेफिनेटली तो कंज्यूमर की साइड से इसको कैसे आप देखेंगे कंज्यूमर के साइड से जो है इसको देखने के लिए कर रहे हैं कि हम लोग जो है वो शुरू के अंदर बिल्कुल भी नहीं कह रहे कि कंज्यूमर जो है ये लगवाएं वंस इसका जो पायलट प्रोजेक्ट है वो हम लोगों के पास जो है वो इसके हम लोगों के पास इसके जो असरात हम लोगों को दिखना शुरू हो जाए उसके बाद फिर हम कह रहे हैं कि जो हमारे पास बल्क इंडस्ट्रीज है बल्क पावर कंज्यूमर हैं लार्ज इंडस्ट्रीज हैं उसके बाद फिर हम उनके पास जा रहे हैं और उस ये दो सेक्टर को कवर करने के बाद फिर आप अपना पब्लिक के लिए ऑफर कर दें लेट से आपके लिए आप कहें कि मेरा ठीक है लोड इतना है और इतना कंज्यूम करते हैं तो मैं जो हूँ वो मैं यूज कर सकती हूँ मैं जो हूँ वो अपना यूज कर सकती हूँ मैं अपना ये इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर लगवाना चाहती हूँ तो उसके बाद जो है इसकी यूटिलाइजेशन जो है वो हम लोगों के पास जो है वो हो जाएगी हाँ जरूरी नहीं है कि सबके लिए चाहे हो सकता है कि मैं ना चाहूँ मेरा इतना जो है वो यूज ही ना हो या मेरा इतना इलेक्ट्रिसिटी का बिल ही ना हो कि मैं स्मार्ट मीटर्स के ऊपर जाना चाहूँ और मैं ये टैरिफ जो है न्यू टैरिफ की डिजाइनिंग जो है इससे जो है अपना एडवांटेज लेना चाहूँ इन टर्म्स ऑफ फाइनेंशियल एडवांटेज में इससे लेना चाहूँ बट आपका एनर्जी का यूज इतना ज्यादा हो कि आप कहें कि नहीं हाँ मैं ये इस मीटर की कॉस्ट है वो खुद बेयर कर लेती हूँ और मैं इससे जो है ना अपने ये वाले टैरिफ से एडवांटेज लेना चाहूँ थैंक यू नसीर अख्तर साहब Assalamu alaikum uh, mera naam nasir akhtar hai ji uh, we do uh, uh, smart metering across the world ye yahan pe uh, what we have noticed ke for the past 10 years uh, the pilots and experiments and uh, what not has been happening but there has never been a serious thought yes uh, the uh, smart grid smart metering infrastructure Uh, uh needs a a serious investment but it's not 2 billion up front it requires only about 150 to 200 million dollars to put up the back end and then the additional costs are the communication and the meters itself on an average in one of these days it costs around 100 to 150 dollars per consumer so you can calculate uh, what is the roi on putting up this infrastructure as soon as possible so um, in a in a nutshell the 150 dollar is the investment now who is going to do this investment obviously distribution companies should be doing as they do they do charge eventually uh, the the end users but uh, that is the the ballpark figures i mean the cost of putting up a smart metering infrastructure is about 150 dollars per consumer that's the the benchmark across the world yahi nasir sahab mera yahi khayal tha and this is why i even developed a pc one for this maine kaha ji ye hame to loan chahiye hi nahi ye to hum pc one se kar sakte hain hamare har pc one mein 
बल्कि डेढ़ सौ मिलियन डॉलर जो आप बात कर रहे हैं अगर डेढ़ सौ मिलियन डॉलर है वो तो पीसी वन सी डी डब्ल्यू पी में मेरा ख्याल नहीं आएगा वो तो सिर्फ वैसे ही हो जाएगा सो इट्स सच एन ईजी थिंग टू डू मुझे समझ नहीं आ रही कितने इन्फ्लेटेड कॉस्ट क्यों आ रहे हैं आप एग्री ये आई वॉन्ट टू बाई अटर फॉर माई सर मैं आई विल बी आई विल बी वेरी अप फ्रंट हियर डेट ये जो ए डी बी वर्ल्ड बैंक इनकी दुकानें लगी हुई हैं they they actually inflate the projects and the way they do for example i can tell you the adb's current which is under implementation at isco 420 million dollar pilot project that has been going on for the past 6 years i mean come on they 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 they, they load us with the loans and they do things in such a manner that the roi fades away so it it, it was just one year job jo jisko 7 saal unhone laga diya i'm i'm not criticizing uh, in a, in a way but uh, that that's how the, the 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 loan money is utilized here and that is how we have accumulated 120 billion dollars without having an roi ये तो बस आप लोग जो इकोनॉमिक्स वाले हैं वही ज्यादा बेहतर जानते हैं एग्जैक्ट कॉस्ट कितनी होगी तो ऑन अ टेक्निकल साइड जो है वो उस लिहाज से बता रहा हूँ ये इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डेवलप हो जाता है तो इसके जो है सारे के सारे एडवांटेज इतने ज्यादा हैं पहला पॉइंट और सर सेकेंडली की जो ऑलरेडी एग्जिस्टिंग इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर है उसको यूज करते हुए भी जो है इससे जो है वो एडवांटेज के अंदर जो है वो लगा हुआ है कुछ हमारे पास नहीं है कुछ नहीं लगा हुआ कुछ नहीं लगा हुआ आई कैन गारंटी यू डेट आई चैलेंज यू इज नथिंग ओके But, may, but reality may, may request you to leave your contact with me in private uh, so that uh, it's, it's, you sound interesting your arguments are very interesting so let us get back to you uh, with a proposition uh, about this smart metering soon and let's talk about it uh, all right afterwards. sure thank you we'll so much we'll uh, we have another question from akhtar ali sir d akhtar sir unmute yourself please Assalamualaikum. This is Syed Akhtar Ali. I am former member Energy Planning Commission. Ah, look, some different contradictory statements are coming out, and some very controversial things have been said. I have gone and looked at the Pesco and the Mepco in 2015. एक पायलट प्रोजेक्ट जो है वो काम कर रहा था और तो ये सही नहीं है कहना कि कुछ नहीं है वो हो सकता है कि अब इस्तेमाल ना हो रहा हो लेकिन द फैक्ट इज के पेस्को और मेपको में ये सिस्टम लगाया गया यूएस एड की मदद से और ये गलती थी कि इसको उन्होंने बजाय इसके कि उसको आगे बढ़ाते एशियन डेवलपमेंट ने बैंक ने आकर वो आईएसको और लेस्को का यानी टू मोस्ट एफिशिएंट कंपनीज जो हैं उनके अंदर अपना एक नया प्रोजेक्ट कर दिया बजाय इसके के जो बीज लगा हुआ था वहीं से उसको आगे बढ़ाएं और दूसरे ये कि पेस्को और लेस्को आर द हाईएस्ट लॉस गिविंग हाईएस्ट लॉस गिविंग कंपनीज तो एट प्लानिंग कमीशन हमने तो इसको वी एड अपोज इट एंड वी रिजेक्टेड इट एंड दैट्स व्हाई दिस कुड नॉट बी इम्प्लीमेंटेड फिर और अब कंसेंसस मुल्क में ये है एशियन डेवलपमेंट बैंक का द प्रोजेक्ट एज इट वॉज फॉर्मुलेटेड ट्राइंग टू इंस्टॉल स्मार्ट मीटर सिस्टम इन द टू मोस्ट एफिशियंट कंपनीज rather than selecting the 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 less least efficient where the losses are chori or losses are to the extent of from 20 to 35% so uh, it could not be i was the one who actually rejected it and it this aur badi koshish ki asian development bank ne ab tak karta raha hai aur ye nahi ho raha hai acha main aap se arz karu ke aap koi bhi cost unka to khair cost estimate zyada hai 
کوئی انہوں نے جو بتایا ابھی جس صاحب نے نصیر افسر صاحب نے ون ففٹی ڈالر ان کا ہے ٹو ففٹی ڈالر بہرحال اگر اس کے بیچ میں بھی رکھ لیں تو دو سو ڈالر دا کوشچن از کہ پینتیس ملین تھرٹی فائیو ملین کسٹمر ہیں تو تھرٹی فائیو ملین کو آپ دو سو سے ضرب دیں تو یہ آتا ہے سیون بلین ڈالر اینڈ اٹ ول ٹیک یو ایٹ لیسٹ ٹین ایئرس پینتیس ملین آپ دبے ہمارے جو کسٹمرز ہوتے ہیں دبے آپ نے دیکھا ہوگا کس طرح میٹرز ٹنگے ہوئے ہوتے ہیں اف یو ہیو سین تو صورت حال تو دی کنسینسس دیٹ ایمرج ود ان اور لوکل پیپل ادر دین دا اے ڈی بی وہ اس کے اس ڈسٹریبیوٹڈ ٹرانسفارمرس پر لگایا جائے تاکہ وہ چونکہ کم ہوتے ہیں اور اس میں ایریا وائز دیٹ ووڈ اینیبل دا کمپنیز ٹو آئیڈینٹیفائی دی ایریاز ویئر دا لاسز آر دا موسٹ تو وہ انویسٹمنٹ جو ہے وہ کوئی تین چار سو پانچ سو ملین ڈالر کا ہے پورے ملک کے لیے اور اس کے تھرو ون کوڈ آئیڈینٹیفائی دی لاس گونگ ڈسٹریبیوشن ٹرانسفارمر ایریاز وچ آر ریلیٹیولی اسمال ایریاز ہزار کسٹمرس ہزار گھروں پر بھی ایک نہیں ہوتا ہزار بھی گھر نہیں ہوتے بس میں ایک جملہ کہہ دوں تو کہنے کا مقصد ہے کہ دیر ان الٹرنیٹو پروپوزل فرام دا دیسیز اینڈ دا فائٹ از آن بٹوین دا اے ڈی بی اینڈ دا دیسیز وٹ از دا رائٹ سولوشن تھینک یو سر صاحب شدرا ڈونٹ کم تھینک یو تھینک یو ویری مچ فرسٹ آف آل آئی وڈ لائک ٹو تھینک پائڈ راستہ فار پرووائڈنگ دس اپرچونیٹی ٹو پریزینٹ آر ورک and uh, also for smoothing the research throughout the course of the study. Uh, for the sake of time, uh, I'll try to keep my presentation brief and uh, quickly run through the main aspects of the project. Uh, it is important to note that as the webinar suggests, uh, here I'm not presenting the solution on how to manage energy crisis in Pakistan. In fact, I'm presenting the research study performed by me and my team. And yes, uh, This can be one of the initiatives which can help overcoming present uh, energy issues in Pakistan. Uh, first of all, the introduction. Uh, in the recent past, uh, GOP has undertaken certain uh, initiatives in electrical power sector uh, mentioned in the slide. Uh, micro and mini grids deployment uh, offers an excellent opportunity to tie up these interventions with each other and uh, bring a more comprehensive solution set to Pakistan's energy landscape. Uh, on one end, it can help achieve government renewable energy targets. Previous slide, please. Uh, yeah. On one hand, it, it can help achieve uh, government renewable energy targets. And on the other hand, it is a key and most feasible solution to providing uh, electricity access to unconnected customers. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, uh, I will not uh, read through all the rationales of uh, MG deployment, but let me mention only the most important ones, which are uh, increasing trend of end consumer tariff, significant uh, segment of population is yet unelectrified, uh, decreasing cost of uh, decreasing cost trend of uh, MG's deployment, uh, huge potential of renewable energy and difficulty in grid access. Next slide, please. Uh, development of possible scenarios. Uh, I won't explain the complete research methodology followed during the study. However, explaining the factors while developing possible scenarios is important to mention. Uh, an important task in the study was to develop possible scenarios and applications of MGs, uh, keeping in view the context and uh, practicalities in Pakistan's energy landscape. Uh, to emphasize this fact, consider, for example, an MG in Balochistan area where there is no currently um, zero access to electricity or any other form of energy. The requirement of energy from MG systems may uh, perhaps be getting water from nearby wells 
energy for fan or charging a mobile phone uh, while on the other hand the requirement of energy usage in northern areas uh, is quite different uh, um, because it's mostly for heating purpose and uh, one cannot rely on hydro resources which become simply unavailable or highly unreliable in winter so b- based on those factors and the following three possible scenarios are developed which are uh, as mentioned in the slide next slide please yeah for each of the three developed scenarios the model determines best combination of components and energy mix for the system and optimal number of each component along with most feasible size and rating of it next slide please yeah uh, here is the comparison for different applicable scenarios uh, with a base case of uh, diesel generator um, well these numbers are well explained in the next slides one by one so better to move on the next slide yeah so the main uh, research findings i will explain briefly one by one because yeah this is the uh, important part of the of today's presentation so referring to the above results table irr and uh, payback periods of the above three scenarios clearly indicate that mg deployment has strong financial viability and uh, presents a lucrative investment opportunity for the investors investors uh, private sector of pakistan could reap the benefits of this investment opportunity and at the same time fulfill the needs of unelectrified population creating a win win situation for all uh, moving to the second point it is uh, re- again referring to the above results uh, fuel based microgrid solutions results uh, in uh, carbon emissions which is detriment detrimental to the environment and uh, renewable energy based mg saves significant emissions and is thus environment friendly as compared to diesel generator uh, which is a usual solution of electricity provision in uh, our remote unelectrified areas third point interestingly and contrary to the expectations re dominated mgs present much more financial viability as compared to fossil fuel based mgs uh, it indeed gives an important signal to the investors and policy makers to promote renewable energy sources in future energy decisions fourth point uh, we are all aware of the increasing trend of electricity prices recently uh, which is forecasted uh, unfortunately to increase significantly in upcoming years due to various factors um, we all know those factors like inefficiencies in um, in the electrical grid sharp currency devaluation increase in fuel prices uh, etc etc uh, due to the increasing trend of electricity prices uh, mg deployment has become a cost effective solution uh, as compared to the conventional integrated uh, integrated grid for only for particular areas and scenarios as discussed in the previous slides uh fifth point mg option is better than the conventional grid for the above scenarios applications uh, only however it is important to note that it is not an optimal solution under all situation and conditions it is it is a, a flag here to to be mentioned uh, the feasibility will change significantly depending on uh, various factors like uh, no or lesser re potential in particular area or uh, uh, there is a consumer requirement of supply reliability uh, of maybe uh, 0% or 1% that will that will impact a lot the results of the study uh, and also the change in cost trends of renewables versus fossil fuels we don't know uh, in future how this cost trend will evolve uh the sixth point a few of the technical issues associated with mg system and in operations are stability relaying harmonic safety voltage and balance etc uh although mgs present a cost effective solution for remote unelectrified areas uh they may face technical issues if not properly designed again this is a flag uh owners of mg must take care of these issues next slide please Oh uh, no, sevens. So uh, policy and regulatory framework are one of the critical uh, prerequisites in achieving widespread MG deployment uh, in Pakistan. 
Uh, however, existing framework is insufficient to effectively upscale MG's deployment. Fortunately, during the course of our study uh, in December 2021, NEPRA, the regulator of Pakistan electric power sector, published a draft licensing regulations for MGs. Uh, this is an important step to achieve uh, one of the objectives of this uh, study. Alhamdulillah. Next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, one of the interesting findings of the study is uh, determining even more economic viability of DC type microgrids. DC microgrids have become a reality in many countries during recent years and uh, evolved technologically very fast. They show a promising 12% decrease in the cost of energy as compared to similar uh, AC microgrids. So yeah, this is, this is uh, explained in the study. Uh, point number nine, availability of miniature hydro storage in water pumping applications provide extra flexibility in MG modeling, hence reducing overall electricity cost. Uh, in this context, the application of MGs for irrigation purpose presents an interesting case. Uh, hybrid MG have an irrigation application uh, has far more economic viability as compared to similar normal rural MG. Uh, and as per study, it shows 18% decrease in the cost of energy. Uh, next point is uh, number 10. Uh, allowed capacity shortage or in other words, supply requirement of the customer is an important factor to be considered for MG deployment. Uh, since the cost of energy decreases exponentially with increase in the allowed percentage capacity shortage. Uh, point number 11, similarly, uh, discount rate and project lifetime are important factors to be considered to evaluate the feasibility of microgrids. Cost of energy increases linearly with a discount rate and decreases exponentially um, with the project lifetime consideration. Uh, so these are the findings that may be helpful for investors uh, determining their project feasibility. At the same time, it may be beneficial for policymakers uh, to take their decision comparing various alternatives and future energy outlook for Pakistan. Uh, point number 12, uh, allowed percentage capacity shortage or supply reliability requirement significantly affects the energy mix decisions. Uh, an interesting example is that with a customer requirement of uh, this number equal to 0.4%, the inclusion of uh, conventional generators in the optimal energy mix uh, would be a must, uh, must decision in the energy mix. And that cannot be achieved exclusively without renew with renewables and storage systems. So uh, it is one of the very important factors. Point number th 13, uh, critical sensitivity is the demand profile, which significantly affects the cost of energy of the MG system. Uh, in case the demand profile is changed from 24 hours to 12 hours, um, for example, if we want only, only the provision of electricity for the day only, it shows a promising 40% decrease in cost of energy. Um, and this can be one of the applications in uh, rural areas. Next slide, please. Uh, so these are few of the policy recommendations. Point number one, for upscaling MG's development in Pakistan, a comprehensive policy is surely required, addressing uh, long-term uncertainty of market development, financial support schemes, and risk associated with the presence of centralized grid. Further, a regulatory framework is required to address various regulatory requirements, sustainable operation and cost recovery mechanisms. Uh, NEPRA and Ministry of Energy have a key role to play in it. Uh, point number two, based on the findings of our study, we have already communicated and requested a few changes and uh, modifications in draft uh, NEPRA MG regulations. Uh, the major ones are DC microgrids should be included. Similarly, MGs should be allowed to operate in grid connected mode. Uh, moreover, a mechanism for dealing with the technical issues such as stability, safety, protective relaying, harmonics, voltage and balance, etc., associated with the MGs should be addressed in the final regulations for MGs. Uh, point number three, as discussed in the findings above, this study highlights an interesting opportunity of synergy between different governmental bodies related to agriculture, water, and energy to determine the ifs and hows of, uh, ifs and hows of 
uh, hybrid MG applications in remote rural areas. Point number four, while addressing um, electricity provision for uh, remote and electrified areas of Pakistan, uh, it is imperative for the system planner to consider and evaluate MG deployment before proposing huge investments for transmission distribution infrastructure. This can indeed save a lot in national exchequers. Point number five, based on the study findings, the optimal solution of MGs come out with major share of renewable energy sources. Therefore, RE-based uh, MGs should be promoted in the upcoming policy and regulations. And uh, CO2 uh, emissions should be compensated through a carbon credit mechanism for fossil fuel based MGs uh, to be provided in the upcoming regulatory framework. And again, NEPRA has already, has already been requested to include this in draft MG regulations. Uh, point number six, uh, a lot of design factors have already been presented and discussed showing a significant effect on the per unit cost of electricity. In this regard, it is very important to align the affordability of the customers in the specific geographical areas with the design of MG to create a win-win situation for all the stakeholders. Uh, for the sake of time, I will not go into the details of the business models, uh, uh, but yeah, these are four of the model, four models. I uh, Please go on to the next uh, three slides. These four models uh, differ from the aspect of uh, uh, the ownership and uh, responsibilities of, of um, responsibilities division among, the, among different stakeholders. But yeah, these are uh, mentioned in detail in the study. Please go on through the last, last slide, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Tanal. Questions, please go ahead. David Orden. G. Daniel, sir. If I may, Fahim, is anybody there or shall I ask? No, David Orden. Oh, David, let's go. Let David go. Let David go. Go ahead. David, go ahead. Okay, I think I'm un unmuted. Um, well, Daniel, thanks very much for this, uh, for this study. Um, I was one of the reviewers of the proposal, the midterm report, and your final report, and uh, you know it's really developed into a nice, very thorough uh, technical analysis, policy recommendations, including your testimony at the end, and uh, uh, economic analysis to a certain extent. The one thing that somewhat puzzled me—I missed your first two slides, a couple of slides—I had to step out for a minute. But the one thing that still remains sort of a challenge when I read your report is on the one hand, you say the microgrids are very cost effective, that they have a very short return on, you know, period to return the investment, high internal rate of return. And yet you think if all those things were true, the private sector would be developing these. And that doesn't seem to be happening so much. So could you comment a little more on, on what the whole of is? Like, I guess what I finally read in your, your final report, if I, if I'm not mistaken, is in some senses, some of the areas where these systems would be very useful and cost effective, still the level of income of the population is so low that, that they can't actually in a commercial sense pay those costs. I just wanna see if, if I'm correct in understanding that even though you argue these have a you know, very fast internal, high internal rate of return, fast payoff, that the problem arises in that commercial entities can't go into the area because they really won't be able to collect the, 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 the taxes or the fees for this electricity? Or is there some other constraint, regulatory or otherwise, that's the main constraint on this development? Uh, thank you, David. And uh, yeah, thank you for supporting throughout the course of the study and guiding and providing the mentorship throughout the study. Uh, I will try to address all of your questions. Uh, but yeah, if I miss some of those, please, please uh, repeat those questions. So uh, uh, regarding the financial viability, obviously it is financially, vi financially viable as uh, mentioned in the results, uh, but the problem and the issues which, uh, which are also highlighted in the report are uh, uh, like the requirement of huge investments or requirement of investing in capital requirement like uh, somebody has to invest and also uh, the lack of uh, regulations and uh, uh, policy uh, policy imp uh, 
policy mechanisms in in this uh, area of field which is currently being uh, being developed by NEPRA the regulator so unless there is a clear cut policy and uh, and uh, regulations in this sector uh, i don't think any private investor can invest in these sort of projects so this is one of the uh, challenges in these areas and uh, yeah uh, the work is uh, under process uh, what else you want to ask? Could you please repeat? Uh, well, no, I, I think you've you, you, you started tech and you said it's a large, I mean, maybe the government has to look at this as a compared to other investments in energy. And maybe these are microgrids are, are cost effective in that sense. Um, but then the question is whether the consumers will be able to afford to pay in order to really cover the cost, or does the, does the government have to see this as a essentially another subsidization uh, to get these microgrids growing in, area, in, in areas that you say they might be effective, like there is rural, rural areas that, that don't have electricity? Will, the, will those rural areas ever commercially be able to pay, to pay the true cost of this electricity, or does it have to be consider like a, a public service that needs to be subsidized that that's what i'm trying to drive you yeah, to yeah 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 a little bit more towards the economics of it your your you know your your work is got so much good technical material as well so i'm just trying to bring out a little bit the economics because you do tend to sort of promote these microgrids and i think the challenge is to then argue that that you know on, on what basis does the economics make sense yeah, um, I, I understand your question, and uh, I would like to request uh, Mr. Fahim to share my slides, the last portion of the of my slide, where I have uh, mentioned the four different business models. Uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Fahim, could you please share my slide again, um, the last four slides? Nazim, please share Kurdi. Nazim is actually managing that. Okay, it's coming. So. Um, Last, last few slides. So, David, here, uh, here the, the issues, uh, like uh, if you see the business models, this is the fourth model. Could you please go to the first business model? Yeah, here. If you see uh, the modalities of, uh, of uh, uh, implementing this, pro this sort of projects uh, are yet to be decided in the policies. So, for example, if we consider this business model, the utility-owned model, here, uh, you can see that microgrid and generation is owned by the government and, uh, and uh, built and operated by the government. And land would be owned by the government, services provided by the government. If we follow this business model, the complete utility-owned model, here we, uh, you can see that there are, again, two options in this model. Uh, either, uh, like... Uh, to provide subsidy or uh, not to provide subsidy and and uh, build the customers as in the usual uh, usual mean like uh, followed in the utility model so this is one of the model could you please go to the second slide here yeah here the investor owned model uh, if you see microgrid and generation is built owned and operated operated by the investor uh, land will be owned by the investor and services will be provided by the in investor. So it is totally a private sector uh, sort of theme to be followed. Uh, here, again, uh, government can decide to subsidize or the most appropriate way will be to, uh, to build the customers. And uh, again, this is as per the draft MG regulations and policy. So this is this can be one of the models, and uh, yeah, the government can decide to subsidize it directly or indirectly, whatever uh, they want to uh, the way they want to follow. Could you please go to the next slide? Yeah, here, here. If you see the again, it is an investor model, but uh, the difference is O and M and other services will be provided by CBOs and managed by the management board. Uh, it will be more. Uh, I would say practical model, and uh, it is already been implemented, uh, sort of implemented in uh, KPK areas where there is a, a huge uh, potential of hydros and the electricity tariff is not that much uh, expensive. So this sort of model is already being followed in KPK areas. 
uh, and it is quite practical practicable model could you please go to the next slide yeah here uh, o and m and other services will be provided by an esco uh, managed by the investor boards and this model is is in uh, under uh, uh, plan planning by ppdb power punjab uh, private power uh, infrastructure board ppdb i, I don't uh, <laughs> so so this is uh, these these are sort of models which can be implemented and uh, your concerns about subsidy and uh, about uh, uh, aligning the cost uh, and uh, consumer consumer affordability parity with the investments these these things can be can be addressed use, uh, using these sort of models and yeah these are very preliminary models and uh, customized models can also be uh, um, uh, prepared by the policy makers and being implemented in the in in pakistan's power sector hope the answer is uh, clear now thank you thank you dr nadeem ji my question follows on from david's question i'd like to understand what is your definition of a micro grid and uh, Um, how will it relate to the grid? For example, now we have got a very large grid in Pakistan thanks to the World Bank, and we got number of villages connected. So, if you are putting a micro grid in a remote area where there is hardly any population, then obviously by definition it's unfeasible. And knowing the government can do it, the private sector can do it. Or do you envisage micro grids to be operating, let's say, in Lahore? Let's say I've got more in my own. Sort of housing colony or building of flats. Can I operate a micro grid in there? Can I, can I generate my electricity and use it there? So I mean, you know, it's that kind of thing. And the second question that I have is related to that again. What do you mean when you say policy or a regulatory framework? What is required? Okay, thank you. Uh, number one question is the definition of micro grids. Micro grid is a standalone or grid connected system. Uh, electricity power system which includes generation distribution and load uh, obviously it will be facilitated by adding some sort of uh, battery storage and some sort of uh, you can say the system operator sort of mini system operator program computerized program so this is the concept of uh, micro grids or mini grids Uh, obviously it it varies a lot from uh, from the perspective of size and the capacity of the system so from my perspective this is the this is the definition of microgrids uh, your question about uh, uh, rationale of uh, microgrids yeah uh, for uh, remote areas of pakistan it obviously make sense uh, and um, and have huge financial viability Uh, especially in those areas where there is a huge potential of renewable energy, and there is uh, there is the, the the difference from the main electric electrical grid is is in hundred of kilometers. So obviously that makes sense uh, in those areas. Uh, regarding uh, micro grids in uh, commercial areas, uh, yeah, I have included it in the in the in in the report and subject it 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 subject to the policy decisions by the policy makers. Recently, uh, uh, if you see, this is the this is related with the electricity market. Recently, electricity market has been uh, open. By the by, the, by the Pakistan Electric Power Sector uh, Authority, so uh, this is again a decision from the policy makers if they want to allow the private uh, housing societies or private commercial sectors to have their own um, generation distribution infrastructure and uh, and work independently or. even if they want to connect to the uh, to the electricity grid they can connect to the electricity grid but depending on the uh, contract they will have with the with the utility so uh, for example uh, i for example an in an, a housing society owner uh, in lahore may decide uh, to invest in uh, solar potential huge solar potential in in the society and having battery storage and having diesel generators and uh, having all the infrastructure and uh, provide electricity to its cons consumers uh, but to 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 maintain the reliability level uh, he also needs some sort of interconnection with the utility and utility say okay 
uh, if you want to buy a unit from me, I can give you unit uh, of electricity uh, for that much price, which is quite higher than the normal consumer. And uh, they can also part. They can also put their um, capacity capacity obligations to that customers. So again, this is this sort of financial uh, regime and electricity market concepts uh, become involved in this in that sort of uh, uh, that sort of. Uh, project implementation and again this depends on how uh, and uh, to what extent we want uh, our electricity sector to be liberated so uh, i hope uh, i i i i have uh, explained a bit on that i forget what was your third question could you please uh, repeat my question was ji what do you want to see kya aap chahte hain ki policy jo hai aur regulatory framework usme kya nazar aaye the way i see it for example the remote areas are useless i i won't invest them why do i invest in in, in las pella or tobat or something i'm not talking about town but outside there but that's too remote uh, the whole of punjab is already on the grid so there's no reason to go to punjab i think kp most of it except the remote areas are on the grid so we don't send also so the question is where do i go to do a good do a micro grid remote areas very little population lives there they're scattered it's useless so i think the future of micro grids will be alongside the grid and what do we need in the popula- in, in the policy to make sure that micro grids can be put in in, uh, in in simultaneously with the grid you said aapne bilkul theek kaha ki agar maine micro grid laga liye jaise maine solar laga liye to mujhe net metering chahiye wagaira wagaira fir mujhe pricing chahiye so what sort of a regulatory and a policy framework do you need ki agar main micro grid let's take an example liberty market for example there are tons of little little generators there that operate or hall road i mean why can't i put up a micro grid somewhere near liberty market and sell to the whole liberty market and in case my grid fails i can go on the utility ye is kism ki policy kya ban sakti hai ji uh yes uh, the is abhi jo filhal sir policy chal rahi hai uske andar to ye uh, off grid micro grids ke upar sirf kaam ho raha hai grid connected micro grids ke upar abhi kaam nahi ho raha that would be uh, second phase of the policy depending on the on the on the uh, on the on the decision makers like what they want to achieve so usme uh, obviously uh, uh, we our team has commented and provided suggestions ke aap isko bhi uh, include kare grid connected microgrids mein aur uh, sir so jahan tak wo aapne kaha ke uh, jo scattered remote areas ke log hain unko policy unko electricity nahi chahiye to as per as per report from uh, i was reading some report and 30% of the pakistan population is still need to be electrified so mera khayal hai mein unka bhi haq hai hamara jitna mera haq hai ya aapka haq hai unka bhi haq hai electricity un tak pahunche obviously unke liye unke liye ek 500 ka grid aur 200 200 thoda sa sorry yahan main thoda sa hard nosed economic economist ban jata hu हक मेरे हर बच्चे का हक है कि माशाल्लाह मर्सिडीज में फिरे मैं नहीं प्रोवाइड कर सकता भाई तो मैं उनको नहीं देता अगर मैं स्कूटर दे सकता हूँ तो स्कूटर ही देता हूँ अगर मैं कुछ भी नहीं दे सकता कुछ नहीं देता तो प्लीज हक को छोड़ दे हक अलहदा बात है हर किसी का हक है मेरा भी हक है मर्सिडीज हो मेरा भी हक है मैं याशी करूँ पर नहीं ये इकोनॉमिक्स की बात बताइए ठीक हो गया सर सर इसमें आप, आपका बिल्कुल आई रिस्पेक्ट योर पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू लेकिन इसमें हमारा थोड़ा सा पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू इसलिए इस तरह से डिफरेंट कर डिफर करता है कि उनके लिए 200 किलोमीटर की ट्रांसमिशन लाइन uh, 500 किलोमीटर का डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर uh, और दो 500 सौ के वी के ग्रेड और दो तीन सौ दो सौ बीस के वी के ग्रेड बना के उनको इलेक्ट्रिसिटी प्रोवाइड करना करने का कोई रैशनैल uh, नहीं है तो उस उस चीज को अवॉइड करने के लिए या उस चीज को ओवरकम करने के लिए एक आ, आ, क्या कहते हैं ऑफ ग्रेड माइक्रो ग्रेड विल विल बी द सॉल्यूशन डिपेंडिंग ऑन द या जिस तरह आपने पॉइंट आउट किया फाइनेंशियल वायबिलिटी अगेन अगर आपने उसको uh, उसको इकोनॉमिक वाइज इकोनॉमिक पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से इन्वेस्ट नहीं करना तो उसमें ये एक सोल्यूशन ऑब्वियसली जो हमारा नई रेगुलेशंस आ रही है उसमें ये ऑप्शन दी जा रही है 
प्राइवेट इन्वेस्टर्स को कि वो वो जाएं वहां पर और इन्वेस्ट करें एंड वो भी मनी कमाएं पैसे कमाएं और वो जहां जहां के जो लोग वहां पर रह रहे हैं वो भी अपना जो है उसको पे करके इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एंजॉय करें तो ये इस तरह से है थोड़ा सा सर मैं आपका पॉइंट समझ गया हूं एंड आई रिस्पेक्ट योर पॉइंट ऑफ थैंक यू तानियाल थैंक यू लेट्स टेक टू मोर क्वेश्चंस नसीर अख्तर साहब प्लीज गो अहेड नसीर साहब अनम्यूट कर लें अपने आप जी अस्सलाम वालेकुम सॉरी वो um, Uh, the gentleman has presented uh, fantastic uh, concepts on microgrid basically um uh, globally uh, it started about 30 years ago and uh, the world is moving towards uh, from conventional to microgrids its primary purpose is is ease of uh, uh deployment management Uh, smarter routing transportation of electricity and integration uh, with the localized uh, 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 generation uh, transmission and uh, distribution so wo uh, usme there is no uh, second thought that we should have been long ago embarked up on converting from conventional grids to micro grids but it's never too late abhi i think starting from now we should seriously consider it's cost effective easy to manage and uh, easy to integrate into private and uh, public utility infrastructures to ye ye basically hai ha wo jo ki research hai usme jo delta inhone bataya hai cost of electricity uh, wo i don't know how uh, because that that appears to be huge इतना फर्क होना नहीं चाहिए उसमें बट मे बी आई एम नॉट एन एक्सपर्ट ऑन दैट रिसर्च इन्होंने की है तो बेसिस होंगे बट डेफिनेटली माइक्रो ग्रेड्स इज द वे टू गो इन फ्यूचर थैंक यू नसीर साहब द कंप्लीट पेपर इज अवेलेबल ऑन रास्ता वेबसाइट इफ यू गो टू पाइट वेबसाइट देर इज अ रास्ता लिंक देर एंड यू कैन फाइंड द पेपर देर एंड स्टिल इफ यू हैव सम मोर क्वेश्चन यू कैन गेट इन टच विद दानियाल्स डायरेक्टली सो लेट्स टेक अनदर क्वेश्चन थैंक यू नसीर साहब प्लीज गो अहेड थैंक यू थैंक यू नसीर साहब आपने बहुत अच्छा पॉइंट उठाया है और Can you? There is a lot of discussion about. Yeah, then sir, we uh, can't hear you properly. Uh, how is now? It's better. Yes. Okay. Please. Okay. Okay. Let me close more closer to the computer. So my question is: There is a lot of discussion about investment and and investing. So there are two questions. One: sh- Are we at the point that we should include investment invested summary? in such research because policy maker we do tell them okay do this do this but i think investors are also interested um, to know uh, from these kind of finding where they can invest that's a, and and should we include and i think there's a lot of discussion within the presentation maybe you know a, a slide targeting investor where we can build upon a, a bankable project out of the research and second um you know a uh, in large scheme of things i heard subsidies and and some related to fossil fuel now in cop 26 you know 96 parties slash countries agreed that they will not fund uh, coal f- power elsewhere in the world including japan and there is huge amount of investor community that sign up not to invest fossil fuel subsidy or fossil fuel based power generation so if we are recommending something within the energy sector where we will find the investors where the global pressure is so much that you know it's almost going to be uh, impossible to find money to invest project where a there is a fossil fuel subsidy b there's a dirty fuel for the energy so uh, how pakistan based think tank see that the money would come from either domestically if domestically will 
such energy generation stand the global pressure uh, uh, maybe not a relevant question but these couple of thoughts from my side thank you ji thank you uh, daniel do you want to respond quickly and then so that we can move to the next uh, yeah so uh, as far as uh, i have understand the question from nadeem saab uh, Uh, he his comments are some sort of uh, supporting my presentation and he's saying that uh, yeah the, the as per cop 26 they are not going to invest in uh, coal coal based power plants so yeah my study findings are also uh, about promoting renewable energy and uh, or renewable energy uh, microgrids uh, renewable energy based microgrids so it is it is one and same thing i don't think any sort of question related to my study here thank you okay so thank you so much daniel so with now uh, let's move to our next and last presentation by dr fozia sohail from aerc university of karachi uh, she will talk about household energy poverty today so fozia are you there i uh, am ji assalam alaikum ji please over to you <coughs> oh, okay <coughs> Uh, thank you for providing me an opportunity to share my study in today's webinar on energy crisis in Pakistan, how to manage it. Um, I want the title page. Uh, I want the first slide. First slide. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, title of my study um, was Household Energy Poverty in Pakistan. This study was supported by Rasta Pied Initiative through CGP One Award. um next slide slide please okay uh, this is the introduction of my uh, project uh, power sector of pakistan has been marked with several inefficiencies including low collection theft transmission and distribution losses increased cost of fuel imports rapid depreciation etc to undertake these challenges the government of pakistan has initiated significant energy sector reforms including electricity tariff reform as a result of these reforms the government Uh, has started curtailing the electricity subsidies and gradually increasing end consumer electricity prices however an increase in uh, tariff decreases the affordability of consumer and impact the overall welfare next please okay Accord, uh, according to the economic survey 2020 21 and world bank residential sector is the major consumer of electricity and about how half of subsidies in 2012 13 were enjoyed by residential sector this proves that tariff um, reforms would have profound impact on the well-being of domestic households next please Uh, firstly the study analyzes the changes in the structure of the standard slabs of electricity tariff over the years it is shown in the table that before 2008 the highest rates were charged after the consumption of 1000 units which were reduced to 7000 units after 2008 then 2014 middle slab was again split into two, two with 100 units in each slab uh, then in 2014 all slab benefit policy was replaced by previous slab policy and most recently all uh, these kind of benefit policies are totally eliminated next please um then this table shows the tariff rate increased frequently during the recent years next please um okay uh, this table shows the percentage increase in tariff structure over the years it reveals that the lifeline tariff slab recorded the highest increase in tariff which is about 182% from 2008 to 2021 of which 97.5 of increase was recorded between 2019 to 2021 and, with, and even more during the recent months um next please So the main objective of this study was to analyze the impact of change in tariff of electricity on the welfare of the household. Um, the specific objective was to find the crowding out effect of increased electricity tariff on household budget allocation of resources. Uh, then we then we measure the compensation required by the householders to mitigate the income effect of rising electricity tariff on household welfare. Then we also conducted a primary survey of Karachi city as a case study, thus to obtain an in-depth information on the energy situation. Okay, from here onwards, finding uh, our first objectives are shown. um these findings are carried out by employing highest 2013 14 and 18 19 uh, that table shows the mean uh, electricity expenditure by income quintiles um so next slide please next please 
can you hear me okay uh, table shows uh, they adjusted a difference of increased tariff on expenditure share by income group the table calculated through coin methodology uh, and shows statistically significant differences um uh in the expenditure allocation of most of the expenditure categories especially for poor households uh then next please uh this table shows the regression outcomes of the crowding out effect of electricity expenditure on various other expenditure categories um in the context of current study the crowding effect is the mechanism through which rising electricity expenditures negatively impact households well being due to the change in the consumption of necess necessities because of the spending on electricity uh this graph um shows uh the most uh, the most important point to be noticed in this in this graph is that the size of crowding in and crowd, crowding out effect are greater for poor households yeah. next please okay these are the uh, oh sorry next next please yeah next please okay these are the five main or the second objective in which welfare impact is estimated by employing high years 15 16 and 18 19 in may 2019 the tariff rates were increased by a flat rate of rupees 1.95 per unit black arrows in the graph shows that the impact of a flat rate uh, sorry previous one please i yeah black arrows in graph show the impact of a flat rate increase in is more burdensome for consumers in the lower slab compared to the upper slab consumers and now next okay um uh, please skip this next one okay in this graph the vertical line above the bar shows the deviation from the mean within a specific slab it shows that electricity consumption in lower slab is slab is relatively inelastic in comparison to upper slab thus any price increase worsens households in lower slab relatively more than the upper uh, slab households in contrast the benefit to upper slab consumer will be more significant in relation to the lower slab consumer for any price decline next please Interestingly this graph shows that the population below the energy poverty threshold in 2015 16 is decreased in 2018 19 despite the increase in tariff next please okay the graph confirms that majority of the energy poor laid in uh, lower electricity consumption slab in both years next please okay it is the most important table um, this table shows the pers uh, the percentage of uh, income poor population in karachi city by using both international and national poverty threshold the third quadrant of the table shows the result of national poverty threshold based on cost of basic need methodology it shows that 14.5% of population in karachi city is income poor while around 2% of poor population could be dragged out of poverty by compensating for higher electricity tariff next please okay this is the uh, same results are shown in this graph um, but additionally graph shows that 7.44 percentage population are the most deprived in karachi city as facing both income and energy poverty next please okay skip this okay next yes next please uh okay figure uh, uh, these are the results um uh, for, uh, through the uh, that we obtained through the uh, survey that we conducted in karachi city on energy issues uh, this figure depicts that on average the highest unit of electricity are consumed by only 7% of household next please the highest per population of households of karachi that is 32% on average consume only 425 units of electricity per month next please Uh, this figure depicts that on, on average household consume more than 700 kilowatt hour per month pay about three times more than the households that end up consuming just below 700 kilowatt hour another significant feature is that government charges and other charges like pvl fee fuel adjustment charges etc constitute significant proportion of total bills next please more significant information detected uh, from this graph is that the fuel adjustment charges for the lifeline slab is more than the total amount spent on unit consumed whereas government charges also constitute significant proportion please next 
Okay, uh, this figure reveals that household consuming less than 300 kilowatt hour on average are worsen of under time of use reform because such households are now bound to pay more than two times higher. Next. Okay, this table uh, provides the impact of recent increase in electricity tariff rates on household expenditure. In 2021, tariff rates are revised again for all consumption slab except the lifeline tariff slab. Tariff are increased with flat rate of rupees 1.61 and rupees 3.33 for lower slab and upper slab respectively. The highest in, uh, percentage increase is recorded for the household having sanction load of five or above. Impact is substantial on lower consumption household as well. Next, please. Uh, okay, we consider imperative to uh, educate general public about sustainable energy consumption habits. Hence, we include these modules in questionnaire to understand the cognitive and behavioral aspect of household in energy use. Next. This table shows the energy literacy index computed by employing various energy literacy indicators which are given in the questionnaire. The table shows that residents of not a single town in Karachi are literate enough about tariff structure, tariff rates, and other aspects of energy. Next, please. Uh, this table shows the index that measures the household behavior and habit for the use of electricity in their daily lives. The table shows that the household behavior about the electricity use is moderate uh, in Liari, Mali, and Gadab town only. Index value shows that citizens' behavior towards energy use could be improved by educating them. Uh, next, please. Next, uh, yeah. Uh, table shows the satisfaction index that measures household um, level of satisfaction with, with K electric services. Um, the value is around uh, 0.5 for uh, each town, which shows the moderate level of satisfaction across households. Uh, now, uh, the policy implication, which is on the next slide. Next, please. Yeah. Um, uh, there are some policy implications that we obtained from this um, project. Um, the first one is uh, to safeguard the poorest. It is recommended to estimate social impact on a regular basis before the scheduled price hike. Uh, this will provide targeted uh, financial and social support programs. In this regard, existing programs like BISEP or SR support program could be scaled up or new ones could also be initiated for ensuring food security and other necessity, uh, necessities. It has also been learned from the experience of other countries that successful implementation of reforms was accompanied by compensation packages for poor and increased service quality and reliability for households that are pay paying higher prices. So uh, the study considered that educating the general public about sustainable energy consumption habit is imperative. In this regard, literacy program at high school level or through advertisement on social media could be initiated. In the past, public service messages for saving electricity uh, were uh, communicated through television advertisement. The same policy uh, should be continued and energy efficient appliances should also be promoted um, in the households uh, uh, to improve electricity affordability, particularly among middle and higher income households. Next. Thank you. Thank you so much, Fuzia. Uh, I will take the opportunity to ask you the first question. Like Punjab, uh, would you also okay, support yeah. free electricity for users with 100 units per month? Punjab, Hello? Hai, 100, aapko meri awaz hai. Hello? Ji, mm, Fuzia, I can, 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 can you hear me? Hello. Ji, Ms. Fozia, can you hear me? Uh, up, sorry, uh, I cannot listen to you. Um, I cannot hear you. Can you hear me now? Aapko awaz hai meri. Hello. Ji, we can hear you well. Aapko hamari awaz nahi aare. Okay, so let me repeat my question. Uh, meanwhile, other can raise their hand so that we can also take more questions. Uh, I was asking, like Punjab, uh, would you also support free electricity for users with 100 units per month? 
um actually uh, uh, is uh, one of my finding uh, ek meri finding thi isi ke andar ke uh, jisme maine ek reference pe diya tha aur hamari report bhi usko um, support karti hai uh, ke hamari uh, ye jo uh, lower slab hai uh, lifeline slab jo hai wo ineffective hai uh, less than 3% uh, jo uh, karachi pe kyunki humne kaam kiya hai to less than 3% jo users hain karachi ke Uh, वो सिर्फ uh, इसमें कॉल करते हैं और वो भी उस वक्त जबकि uh, ये एक टैरिफ रिफॉर्म अभी नहीं आया था uh, जिसमें अभी तो थोड़े से मॉडिफिकेशन आ गए हैं कि सिक्स uh, मंथ्स uh, तक अगर किसी ने फिफ्टी यूनिट से ज्यादा uh, वो या हंड्रेड यूनिट से ज्यादा इस्तेमाल नहीं किया तो तो इट्स एन इफेक्टिव इन कराची और इन पाकिस्तान इन करेंट सिनारियो तो आई डोंट थिंक जो अभी ये पॉलिसी आई है ये uh, इसका कोई भी यूजफुलनेस uh, है right any more questions ji please go ahead zahid asghar sir ji doctor sir please go ahead unmute kar le apne aap ko doctor sir am i audible ji acha fozi i have so many other questions on your data yes, and other things but this last point which you are pointing out that's very important because mm-hmm. we have these labs under 50 units or 100 units but you are very right that majority of the population basically we have very harsh weathers we have very extreme weathers hardly very few people fall in that so i i'll request you that that focus on this point more than just uh, comparing high s and low a lower income and upper income 17 18 with 12 14 i think that's very important point which you are talking about that which level of slab is really effective otherwise this 50 unit 100 unit i agree with you even if i am using one or two bulbs and one or two fans which karachi ids probably use throughout the year probably they cross this uh, 100 unit slab so my my uh, suggestion will be that you should focus more on this issue uh from policy perspective thank you ji sir uh, thank you uh, you are absolutely uh, right actually agar hum dekhe to recently itni tezi se uh, tariff structure change ho raha hai aur itni tezi se uh, prices iske tariff change ho rahe hain ki jaise ye abhi jo punjab ki jo policy aayi hai 100 units wali ye recently aayi hai aur jaise project thode pehle ka hai तो ऑब्वियसली uh, ये चीजें इनकॉर्पोरेट की जा सकती हैं रिसेंटली क्योंकि uh, uh, बहुत ज्यादा फ्लक्चुएशन uh, हैं इनमें और uh, बहुत ज्यादा तेजी से चेंजेस हैं uh, तो ऑब्वियसली अब uh, अगर हम देखें तो हमारा जैसे प्रोजेक्ट एंड हुआ है अगर फेबरी में तो फेबरी के बाद से ही uh, इस तेजी से वो आए हैं कि थोड़ी सी uh, इसको रिवाइज करने की वैसे भी जरूरत है और थोड़ी सी नई चीजें इनकॉर्पोरेट करने की जरूरत भी है बिल्कुल आपसे कह रहे हैं जी मिस मेहर जी ये बड़ा इम्पोर्टेंट इन्होंने सर्वे पेश किया थैंक यू सो मच मेरा क्वेश्चन ये है कि इतनी इम्पोर्टेंट उसमें आपने कराची बेस्ड है और फिर आपने जो ट्रांसपेरेंसी इन बिलिंग इश्यूज क्योंकि ये बहुत बड़ा मसला है कंज्यूमर्स को कराची में इसको आपने अपनी स्टडी में इंक्लूड नहीं किया तो ये मैं बस पॉइंट आउट करना चाह रही थी थैंक यू सॉरी मैं समझ नहीं पाई ट्रांसपेरेंसी इशू बिलिंग का एक्चुअली हमारी जो स्टडी थी वो अगर मैं ये सही समझ रही हूँ क्वेश्चन आपका तो हमारी जो स्टडी है वो बेस्ड करी थी ज्यादातर के जो इसका इम्पेक्ट आया है जैसे जैसे टैरिफ का स्ट्रक्चर इन्होंने स्लैब्स का स्ट्रक्चर जैसे जैसे चेंज किया और उसके रेट्स जैसे जैसे चेंज किए हैं Uh, तो uh, इसको फोकस करते हुए हमने थोड़ा सा इसको नैरो डाउन करते हुए अपनी स्टडी को कंडक्ट किया था इश्यूज uh, तो कराची में अगर देखा जाए तो इलेक्ट्रिसिटी के और भी बहुत सारे हैं यू आर एक्सलूटी राइट कि बिलिंग के इश्यूज हैं फिर मीटरिंग uh, के इश्यूज हैं फिर थे uh, के इश्यूज हैं uh, तो ऑब्वियसली uh, एक ही स्टडी में सब चीजें कैटर करना बहुत uh, डिफिकल्ट और फिर जबकि सीनारियोज इतने तेजी से चेंज हो रहे हो तो इन फ्यूचर फ्यूचर स्टडी के लिए इंशाल्लाह हम इसको पॉइंट को बिल्कुल हमारे जहन में ये भी हैं और भी बहुत सारे पॉइंट्स हैं हेलो राइट सो थैंक यू सो मच जी वी आर ऑलरेडी 
uh, have stretched a lot. I started at 6 p.m. So I would like to thank all the presenters, uh, Naveed Darshad Saab and his co-PI Awais Khan Saab, Daniel Salim and Fozia Sohail. Uh, on the behalf of Bayad and Rasta, I thank you all. And I also thank uh, all the participants who joined us. We will have another uh, webinar on urban development on 28th of july which will be thursday at 6 p.m pakistan standard time so hope to see you and your friends and colleagues here uh, participating in these webinars more often so thank you so much ji allah